The year is 2005. A teenage girl is about to shake up the music industry with her new pop and R&B sound and her debut single is going to be a top 10 hit. She's going to brush elbows with the hottest artists at the time like Beyonce and be considered the likely artist to rival her level of stardom. She's dedicated, beautiful, and committed to making it in the industry. She has a good shot at it since she has the backing of some of the industry's best producers like L.A. Reid and Jay-Z. <laughs> You probably thought I was talking about Rihanna, but I'm actually talking about Tierra Marie. You may know her from Love and Hip Hop, but at the height of her career, she was set up to be the next big pop and R&B act. But in a quick turn of events, her career was derailed and that of her label mate Rihanna took off. At first, Tierra Marie seemed destined for the career that Rihanna has. So why didn't she take off too? Let's get into it. Tierra Marie was born in Detroit in 1987. All throughout her childhood, she'd had a passion for music and singing, which she shared with her family. Her family encouraged her to pursue her music career, and she began singing as a young child. During her early teen years, Tierra trained under Kiss Productions. Eventually, she auditioned for L.A. Reid, one of the music industry's biggest execs. In the 90s, L.A. Reid had given acts like TLC and Usher their big breaks. In the early 2000s, he signed icons like Sierra, Pink, and Avril Lavigne. Tierra auditioned live for L.A. Reid and was offered a contract after. Tierra's star power was noticed early on. The vice president of A&R at Def Jam said, Tierra was a star when she walked into the room. She captured the room when she did her audition. We fell in love with her from day one. At just 16, Tierra also became part of Rockefeller Records, which Island Def Jam had purchased and named Jay-Z president. In 2004, she began to work on her debut album and received help from Jay-Z on crafting it. Tierra's increasing popularity earned her cameos and music videos for groups like 3LW and of course Jay-Z. She also modeled for Rockwear, a streetwear brand that was owned by Jay-Z and Dame Dash. Months after Tierra was signed to Def Jam, Jay-Z received a demo record from an A&R exec. The demo was from a 17-year-old singer from Barbados named Robin Fenty. However, she intended to go by her middle name, Rihanna. Rihanna had done so well in her audition that she was brought to the US to record a demo. One of the songs on the demo was Ponde Replay. After hearing it, Jay-Z invited Rihanna to audition for Def Jam. L.A. Reid recalls the day that Jay-Z introduced him to Rihanna, saying, We went back to his office and he introduced me. She was a startlingly beautiful 17-year-old girl from Barbados. She opened her audition with the Beyonce song, Singing, but the whole time she was piercing me with those laser eyes. I saw her determination, her commitment. I saw someone who was going to be a big star someday. My head was spinning. She sang another song, Ponde Replay, that would become her first hit. LA said he made sure Rihanna didn't leave the building without being signed to Def Jam. In the spring of 2005, she officially released Ponde Replay. The dancehall track had pop and reggae influences, and the entire world was now fascinated with the beautiful young singer from a small island in the Caribbean. Ponde Replay hit number one on the Billboard Dance Club Songs chart and went number two on the Hot 100. The song has since gone platinum and was even the focus of Rihanna's cameo in Bring It On, All or Nothing. Despite Rihanna's success, Tierra Marie still had most of Def Jam's attention and support. She was still respected by Def Jam and Rockefeller and was even nicknamed the Princess of Rockefeller. L.A. Reid said that back then, they'd put more time and effort into Tiara. This was because he believed it was Tiara who would be the breakout star over Rihanna. He believed this to the point where he didn't even have a hand in Rihanna's debut album and left it up to Jay-Z and A&R. In August 2005, Tierra released her debut album, Rockefeller Records Presents Tierra Marie. It reached number 5 on Billboard 200 and peaked at number 2 on the R&B hip-hop charts. It sold nearly 70,000 copies in its first week. Make Her Feel Good, the lead single peaked at number 35 on the Hot 100 and number 9 on the R&B charts. Her next single, No Daddy, played for 16 weeks on TRL. A few weeks later, Rihanna released her debut album, Music of the Sun. Ponde Replay was still charting and it was pushing Rihanna into household name status. Just two days after Music of the Sun was released, Rihanna and Tierra Marie performed at the World Music Awards. They were joined by A. Marie, another R&B act whose career faded out by the end of the 2000s. The three girls performed a cover of Destiny's Child's Lose My Breath. To further emphasize that she was Rock Nation's top girl at the time, Tierra sang lead, taking on the spot of Beyonce. Her live vocals are strong and her confidence and stage presence is there. Tierra looked and sounded like a seasoned performer despite still being in her teens. Rihanna and A. Marie killed it also and they have pretty good group chemistry. 
It's one of the few Destiny's Child covers that I've seen where the singers actually do the song justice and it's clear that they're singing the song instead of the song singing them. LA Reid and Jay-Z were in the audience and they looked thrilled by their artist's performance. Destiny's Child was there too and they were all smiles while watching. Tiara seemed poised to live out her dreams as Rock Nation's princess. However, things came to a screeching halt when Def Jam held a company showcase. Jay-Z, of course, was in attendance and so was his then-girlfriend, Beyonce. Tiara and Rihanna both performed at the showcase, as did Neo and a group called Black Butterfly. Coincidentally, Amina, who was also in love and hip-hop, was one-third of Black Butterfly along with her twin sister. At the end of the showcase, Beyonce came up to L.A. Reid and told him that Rihanna was a beast. That simple comment altered the course of music history. A switch flipped, or as L.A. Reid put it, a light bulb went off. At the time, Beyonce was currently proving she was in fact the breakout star many had predicted her to be. Though Destiny's Child was still together, Beyonce had released her debut solo album back in 2003. She was pretty much the sort of star that Def Jam was hoping to create, and Beyonce herself appeared to see it more in Rihanna. Her being with Jay-Z of course only gave her opinion more weight. It was Beyonce's endorsement of Rihanna that made Def Jam begin to treat her as more of a priority on the label. I do just want to say that it's not entirely right to say that Beyonce handpicked Rihanna and then closed the door behind her. Beyonce simply pointed out that she saw a lot of potential in Rihanna, and this led Def Jam to shift more support and resources in her direction. Despite performing well initially, overall, Tierra's debut album didn't achieve the sales that Rockefeller was hoping for. Due to the poor sales, she was dropped from Rockefeller and Def Jam in 2006. She was informed of the split via phone call. Well, you know, what happened was I got dropped from Rockefeller on okay. my prom day. Oh. <laughs> you know, they getting didn't know. Getting ready for the prom? Yeah, honey, getting ready. I was putting lotion on my legs, got a phone call, ring, ring. Hey, uh, yeah, we're going to be letting you go. I was I'm like, oh. I didn't even tell anybody that day. It doesn't seem like the label or Rihanna had anything shady to do with Tierra's album not doing that well. Tierra herself said that she doesn't blame Rihanna for being dropped from Def Jam. In a 2008 interview, she said that she never really saw Rihanna as competition since they were both coming up at the same time. She said she and Rihanna had actually been like sisters while working and touring together. Hailing from Detroit and Barbados, these princesses are Sean Jay-Z Carter's one-two punch on the charts. A beautiful combination. Please welcome Tierra Marie and Rihanna. Wow. Don't you just love being on stage? Yes, it's so wonderful. <laughs> True. You know, sometimes you just want to let go and do you. The only place you can do that is on stage. <laughs> Absolutely. Tiara didn't express any ill will toward Rihanna and said that she was deserving of the success she was having. With Tiara off the label, Def Jam had been able to focus more on Rihanna. It turned out to be a worthy investment, as by 2007, Rihanna had achieved mega stardom with her third album, Good Girl Gone Bad. She'd gotten her first number one the year before with S.O.S., but it was the song Umbrella that solidified Rihanna's spot as a top pop act. After cutting ties with Def Jam, Tierra went on to finish high school. Though she intended to jump back into music, personal problems put her work on hold. Her mother suffered from a stroke and her mental health was suffering. But you know, I was depressed for a little minute. I got back up. I was only 18 years of age. Tierra admitted that she still fully wasn't aware of how her being dropped from the label had all played out. In a year, she'd gone from being one of the most promising artists on Rockefeller's new lineup to being dropped completely. Tierra said she hadn't even heard from Jay-Z, who she'd considered like family at the time, about her being dropped from Rockefeller. Tierra said that she felt Def Jam had been 10 toes down when her album seemed like it would do well, but as soon as things went south, they dumped her. After considering going independent, Tierra eventually signed with Interscope Records. She hoped this time to see more success and reach a broader audience. She wanted her new music to be more true to herself, and this time around, she had a lot more to write about. While under Rockefeller, Tierra said that she'd been pressured to curse and act in a rebellious way that wasn't completely in line with who she was. That's kind of an interesting statement, considering that seems like the exact sort of persona Rihanna would come to be known for. Maybe things worked out for the best because Rihanna portrayed the good girl gone bad, no pun intended, image perfectly. In 2008, Tierra released her first single on her Interscope, No No No. Her first album with the label was said to come later that year or in early 2009. Tierra wrote No 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 herself and it was produced by Charles Hamilton. It only peaked at number 28 on Billboard's mainstream top 40, which was pretty good despite the fact that it had little promotion. Her new album was said to have features from Timbaland and Nelly, but these songs never came to fruition. In fact, it appears that the album with Interscope never came either. 
Tiara did release a single called Automatic that had a Nicki feature. In 2009, she made her acting debut with a small movie role. That year, Tiara would release a mixtape, however, and it was called Don't Make Me Cause a Scene. It was released under For Real Entertainment, a label founded by Nelly. She would now be managed by Cut a Love, who has his own shady past. Cut a Love was a manager and had been a former bodyguard to Nelly. At one point, former Destiny's child member Farrah Franklin was also signed to For Real Entertainment. The mixtape's title track, Calls a Scene, featured Flo Rida. It was a remix of a song that had been intended for Tiara's scrapped album at Interscope. Calls a Scene only peaked at number 73 on the US Hot R&B and Hip Hop chart. The following year, Tiara released another mixtape called Point of No Return. It's hard to find any information at all on how it performed, which leads me to believe that it didn't make too much noise. She released a couple of independent singles with Gucci Mane and Soulja Boy, but none of them saw a lot of mainstream success. However, Tiara did land a pretty big role in Lottery Ticket, which came out that same year. She played one of the love interests of Bow Wow, who starred in the film. X3LW member Naturi Naughton also starred. In 2011 and 2012, Tiara released two more mixtapes. She'd been encouraged by Cutta to keep recording music instead of waiting on the label. None of the releases seemed like they were going to secure Tiara the fame that she'd seemed destined for at the beginning of her career. Rihanna, on the other hand, was thriving, having released We Found Love, Where Have You Been, and Diamonds all within about a year of each other. Her album Unapologetic went number one, and it was her first album to do so. Tiara left for real to work on her sophomore album under Division One Records. The album would be called Sex on the Radio and have a more sensual adult tone. By this time, Tiara was now 24 years old and she wanted her album to showcase her growth and maturity. The first single, You Did That, featured 2 chains. Tiara expressed hopes to collaborate with Tyga, Pharrell, and Big Sean in the future, but none of those collaborations happened. In 2014, Tiara Marie joined the main cast of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. Love & Hip Hop is where some of the industry's has-beens and hopefuls collide. The only real success stories that the show has produced are Cardi B and, arguably, Jocelyn Hernandez. The show was full of albums of a bygone era of hip-hop like Stevie J, Young Jock, and Benzino. Tiara had previously been a minor cast member on Love & Hip Hop New York for a couple of episodes. Now, I'm not going to sit here and rehash every single second that Tiara was on Love & Hip Hop, but I do want to highlight some important parts of her time on the show and their impact on her career. When Tiara originally joined the Love & Hip Hop cast, she expressed her desire to make it big in music again after having been dropped from Def Jam. When Tiara first appeared on Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, she was still recovering from a tumultuous nine-year on-again, off-again relationship with Ray J. Ray J was now dating Princess Love, who he went on to marry and have kids with. This caused multiple fights between herself and Princess, as well as Ray J, many of which aired on Love & Hip Hop. This sort of image of her always arguing and getting into physical altercations definitely wasn't helpful for someone who was trying to get their career back on track. If you've never seen Love & Hip Hop, it's honestly more about relationship drama and fighting than it is about the music. It's rare for that show to actually help someone's career in any serious way. On the third season of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, viewers were shown a darker, more serious side of Tiara's life. She developed a drinking problem and her addiction caused conflicts both romantically and with her friends. One of her altercations resulted in an arrest after she attacked an Uber driver in 2015. The case was dropped eventually after the driver didn't testify against her in court. Between her fights with Ray J, Princess, and Hazel, Tiara came off as violent and aggressive. Early on in the show, it seemed like she was either always arguing with someone or putting them down, and this image kind of never really changed. She also seemed to act like she was better than her castmates just because she'd seen a little bit of success well over a decade ago. A lot of the times when Tiara got in a fight, she'd clearly been drinking or the cast members referred to her having a drinking problem. Hazel cited Tiara's drinking as the reason she decided to move out of their apartment. Honestly, I don't know if it was because she got a villain edit, but Tiara came off as really bitter and hateful in the early seasons of Love & Hip Hop. I'm sure it didn't really make anyone want to support her music. It's also funny how Tiara was quick to call everyone else on that show a flop, but never seemed to realize that she was right there with them. As the show went on, Tiara's storyline had less to do with music and more to do with her on-again, off-again friendships and relationships. Fortunately, Tiara eventually did get help for her drinking problem. She went to rehab in 2017. Her rehab stint was the result of an intervention that had been staged and filmed on Love & Hip Hop. 
Tierra said that although she didn't appreciate how it went down, she was thankful to have gotten some help. So I felt like some people may have been doing it for a little camera time, you, you know, oh. for mm -hmm. that check. Yeah. Yes. And um, so that's how I felt about it. But at the end of the day, going to rehab was one of the best things that I could have ever done for me. The following year, Tierra got into a relationship with Akbar Abdullah Had, an actor and entrepreneur who'd become a recurring guest on Love & Hip Hop. While in the relationship, Tierra found out that Akbar was not only married, but also in a polyamorous relationship and had a girlfriend. After the truth came out, a sex tape as well as some of Tierra's nudes were leaked on the internet. For some reason, 50 Cent went on to share the post to his nearly 20 million Instagram followers. He's also done the same thing with Rick Ross's baby mama, so he's clearly just a weirdo. Tierra filed a lawsuit against Akbar and 50 on the grounds of revenge corn, invasion of privacy, and emotional distress. Celebrity mercenary lawyer Lisa Bloom was at her side. Unfortunately, Tierra lost her suit and was ordered to pay over $30,000 in legal fees. She publicly refused to pay the fees and issued a diss track against 50 Cent instead. One of the worst parts of this situation is that the whole ordeal had Tierra so stressed and upset that she started drinking again. In the summer of 2019, Tierra was arrested for DWI. Ironically, just a few weeks prior, she'd released an EP titled Rehab. When she was apprehended, she had both vodka and an open can of Four Loco in her vehicle. Tierra was also driving the vehicle on only three wheels as the front right tire was missing. Her BAC was three times the legal limit and she didn't have her license on her. Tierra was in violation of a 2011 DWI arrest, which required she had an ignition interlock on her car to make sure she wasn't driving under the influence. Tierra pled guilty to the charges, and instead of receiving jail time, her license was suspended for six years. She was also required to have an ignition interlock installed on her car and keep it for the next year. In the meantime, Tierra returned to Love & Hip Hop Hollywood season six, but this time as just a supporting cast member rather than a main cast member. Her reduced storyline chronicled the aftermath of her DWI and her journey to getting her life back in order. By 2022, the legal fees Tierra owes 50 cents have piled up to over $50,000. She claimed she was unable to pay the fines due to lack of income and revealed her suffering finances in a three hour long debtor's examination. Tierra allegedly hasn't been gainfully employed since 2019 and refuses to seek opportunities outside of the entertainment industry. Even though a lot of people make fun of Tierra Marie for falling off, the way her life played out is entirely in her control. And it must be devastating to feel like you're set up for your dream life and then just suddenly have the rug pulled out from under you. It probably makes it 10 times worse to see one of your peers get the life that you felt that you were on track for. Not only did Tierra have to cope with being dropped from Rock Nation, but she's also had to watch with the rest of the world as they turn Rihanna into one of the biggest artists of the decade. Tierra watched from the sidelines as Rihanna became a multi-platinum superstar, all the while knowing she was very close to having been in that place herself. In his memoir, L.A. Reid admitted he'd been pushing for Tierra to be the front runner of the new Rock Nation girls right until Beyonce put the bug in his ear about Rihanna. It's insane how an innocent comment changed the trajectory of Rihanna and Tierra's lives. Rihanna has gone on to build an empire even apart from music, while Tierra hasn't been able to sustain a music career after her time with Rock Nation. I'm not at all saying Rihanna doesn't deserve her success, but I am saying we can't act like we wouldn't be hurt about the situation if we were in Tierra's place. Tierra's situation just shows how quickly life can change and how success isn't always final. It also just seemed like poor timing. Her album wasn't doing well, and they had a viable alternative route in launching Rihanna's career, especially after her co-sign from Beyonce. Truly, the best case scenario would have been if Def Jam supported Tiara and Rihanna, and A. Marie too, honestly, instead of just choosing one of them. By the way, there's been talk that Beyonce is part of the reason that A. Marie's career never took off, so let me know if you want a video looking deeper into that. Despite having been dropped from her label so long ago, Tierra has never built her level of fame back to what it had been or what it seemed it would be. Clearly, her stint on Love & Hip Hop hasn't revived her career in the way that she hoped it would. She's become more of a TV personality than a singer, and she's gotten more attention for her fights, her addiction, and her messy relationships than she has for any of the music she's put out. After being on Love & Hip Hop and all the scandalous antics Tiara's been in, she would have to do major damage control and a major rebrand if she ever hopes to even have another chance at a singing career. I think the big lesson here is that you never know how life can pan out. 
Even with all the talent in the world, not having the right connections and the support of the right people might stifle even the most promising of careers. I really do hope that Tierra is able to achieve some sort of peace in her life and manage her sobriety. Still, her story is sort of a sad one because she truly is talented and seems to have the world at her fingertips only for it to be taken away all before she turned 20. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, don't be shy to let me know what video you want to see from me next and what you want to see in the future. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye!